Good morning. It is Friday, September 4th, 2020, and this is Daily Prayer with Pastor Lance of Our Savior Lutheran Church in West Columbia, South Carolina. Thank you for making it to the end of the week here with me uh, to study scripture and to pray. It is a strange thing. Uh, we talked a lot last week about the story of Moses and we just looked at some small details of Moses early on in life, but this is now that he's been called by God to lead the people. And, you know, we, we read a lot, you know, that you're to be, lead your people out of Egypt. But that's not the original plan. The original plan was that Moses was simply to get enough freedom for the Hebrew people so that they might go out into the wilderness and worship God as, as God saw fit. Right? And offer sacrifice to God. And, and that's not happening. And Pharaoh's not going to allow it. And of course, part of the reason that the plagues get so uh, increased is because Pharaoh keeps saying no. And through Moses, God brings one plague after another, after another. And Moses, or Pharaoh, has got to be, you know, getting beat down here. Well, this is the story of the tenth plague. And it, it boggles my mind. So maybe there's some other ways we can kind of look at it. A reading from the 10th chapter of Exodus, verses 21 through 29. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand towards heaven, so that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, a darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand towards heaven, and there was a dense darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. People could not see one another, and for three days they could not move from where they were but all the Israelites had light where they lived. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, Go worship the Lord. Only your flocks and your herds shall remain behind. Even your children may go with you. But Moses said, You must also let us have sacrifices and burnt offerings to sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our livestock also must go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind. For we must choose some of them for the worship of the Lord our God. And we will not know what to use to worship the Lord until we arrive there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he was unwilling to let them go. Then Pharaoh said to him, Get away from me. Take care that you do not see my face again. For on the day you see my face, you shall die. Moses said, Just as you say, I will never see your face again. A darkness that can be felt. That's the curious thing about this entire passage to me. Stretch out your hand and bring a darkness upon the land of Egypt, uh, a darkness that can be felt. And then, of course, it is so dark that the Egyptians can't even see what they're running around and what they're doing. Right? And it says, but wherever the Hebrews were, there was light. Well, I don't even, that, that's just, all these other plagues have been, you know, infestations of animals and, and whatnot. You can, you can kind of see happening. Um, but this one is just so that there'd be light over here and no light there. And there's some border between the two of them. And it's a darkness that can be felt. And Pharaoh finally relents and says to the people, all right, you can take your people, uh, even your children, uh, go out into the wilderness and worship God as you please. And Moses says, yeah, well, we're going to have to have some sacrifices. We don't know which animals God wants, so we're taking our entire flocks with us. And Moses and Pharaoh says, yeah, no way, no way. 
Now, maybe he's afraid that once they get out there, they'll just keep on trucking and escape forever. Um, maybe he feels like he's caving in too much. We don't know what it is. It just says that God hardens his heart, and he says, no, you're not doing it. And if you show your face around here, it'll be the last face you see. There's Pharaoh as the embodiment of the Egyptian people, which is what a king always is, um, seems to be at his wit's end here. He wants to give in, but he still has to remain strong. Uh, he's living in a darkness. And in some ways, it's, it's kind of a, a, like, it's a collective national uh, emotional and mental darkness over Egypt. They've just been beat down, plague after plague after plague after plague. And now this one that seems so curious, darkness here, light over there. And I can't think but help, because so often, you know, in the book of Revelation, it says there's going to be no need for the sun and the moon because God, the true light, is always there. And I can't help but think that there's some sort of metaphorical uh, understanding to this passage that says the Egyptians are without God entirely, therefore they're dark. They can feel it. And the Hebrews are with God. And so it's light where they are. And God is with the Hebrews. So. I picked the uh, prayer of the day. Uh, there was a saint named Catherine of Siena, and we're going to pray her prayer today. Power of the eternal God, help me. Wisdom of the Son, enlighten the eye of my understanding. Tender mercy of the Holy Spirit, unite my heart to yourself. Eternal God, restore health to the sick and life to the dead. Give us a voice, your own voice, to cry out to you for mercy for the world. You, light, give us light. You, wisdom, give us wisdom. You, supreme strength, strengthen us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is uh, Labor Day weekend, so be careful out there, folks. Have a great time. Uh, celebrate your right to work, and your ability to work and your opportunities to labor and while you're looking for things to do just go ahead and like share subscribe <laughs>